All right. So next story uh, has to deal with the planet under threat from a meteor that no one saw coming. So uh, I saw the video of it. And I think it's very interesting that none of our satellites or any of our space agencies saw this. And, and yeah. you know, there's always been that talk uh, by a lot of scientists by indicating that we can barely track a lot of the asteroids or space debris that are coming to our planet. And we're lucky that we are able to see the ones that are a threat at all. So, Daniel, what's the story behind this? Okay, so before I get into the story, let me just, because not everyone really understands the kinetic energy that's involved with uh, meteors and why they're so dangerous. Um, uh, a good example that I that I heard one time that I they love saying if you take uh, your fist, just your fist, and you punch something, you're going to do some damage depending how much effort you put into it. But if you put it into the context of a meteor and have it go at like eight kilometers a second, uh, you can destroy a city block with just one fist of energy. So that's what we're dealing with when we're talking about meteor it's not as much the size although the size is very important it's the immense speed that these are moving so in uh, december 18 2018 a couple of months ago a um, meteor uh, exploded in the earth's atmosphere and with a lot of smaller meteors that's what they tend to do there's just too much uh, energy hitting the planet's surface you you know as as you guys know we're under like about 14.6 uh pounds of pressure under us from the atmosphere when a meteor plows through the atmosphere it's basically hitting all of those basically at the same time and uh for the exact uh the, the exact term that they use for it but at some point the amount of energy that is um feeding back into the meteor becomes higher than the atomic structure holding the meteor together and just explodes you can do this by just throwing a snowball at a garage or, that's or called something. um isn't that terminal velocity no not, not terminal, not ter velocity. It's not terminal. Um, it it's something it has a name I'll, I'll think of it it's um it's impact something or that i don't want i know there's a lot of scientist mm -hmm. people out there and i don't want to give a, a wrong term because i know how everyone is with that so the issue with this is that you had a school bus sized meteor that was about 1500 tons 34 feet uh, across was going 71,582 miles an hour and exploded with the force of uh, 10 atomic bombs the ones that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki so this is a very powerful explosion now part of the issue is we don't put the amount of money that we need to into detecting these things the um, all these observatories are actually very good at detecting um, asteroids and uh, meteors that are much larger. I believe that they have uh, a good idea of almost everything that's out there that is greater than 460 feet across. So if something that can wipe out a state or a city, they have those relatively well mapped, but they don't have, um, well, I guess this would take out a city, so maybe just, a, I think they said a state. Yeah. So they're worried about things that can take out a U.S. state or something of that magnitude, but they don't have a good sense of where the stuff is that would take out a city. And that's an issue because, as you know, smaller stuff is more numerous, and they have a very hard time seeing and detecting um, objects of, of, the, of that size. So this is just another reminder. Remember, just a couple of years ago, we had a similar-sized object that uh, exploded over Russia, you had um, the Tunguska effect about 100 years ago in Siberia that just destroyed thousands and thousands. If you really want to see some really miraculous, amazing pictures, look up the Tunguska event in Russia and just... You, you, like, you guys you guys see the movie Signs? So, yeah. Yeah. So you know how the, the cornfields were all... Had, it was like that, but for like just miles in every oh, direction. So, so, so the entire forest. Were the flattened. entire forest was completely burned and just flattened yeah. in a crop circle type you know, setup. You know, this this also shows tells me too that we need to heavily invest into NASA and yeah. a lot of our space agencies because again, right now as it currently stands, a lot of the space agencies, not just including NASA, we cannot really detect all those real dangers out there. We're near to the asteroid belt, and, and mind you, when I'm saying near, I mean it's it's in our vicinity, so. We are at risk of some kind of planet killer or at least some sort of asteroid that could cause some severe damage to a, a potential city in anywhere across the, uh, anywhere across the globe. And I think as us, as a species, how we've developed, we have the resources and ability to do so, but we need to make sure that you know we invest into our space agency, especially with NASA. We, 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 we need to do this to stop any, or, or at least be, be aware of any kind of potential threat so that if there's an asteroid that's going to head towards a, a community or anywhere on the planet, we as a species know about it and will at least call it out for what it is because there's a potential risk 
uh, to, towards an asteroid of that size hitting anywhere across yeah. the globe, but, someone could mistake it to being an atomic weapon fired are, by one of their rival nations. And then all yeah. of a sudden, we get World War III. And I don't think any of us want that. Now, of course, that's a, that's a ridiculous scenario, but it is a potential scenario because we need to know what's, what's going to impact our planet. So, Daniel. Yeah. So no pun I, intended, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, another thing is, like, there's a lot of stuff that's very scary in space. We've only really been advanced with pictures and stuff for, you know, about 100 years. Um, there was a time period, I, I think it was after the Civil War, around the Civil War, where the sun had this enormous uh, solar ejection that today would have just wiped out almost everything on the internet all everything would have been taken out by it but back then they just had telegraph poles so they just couldn't use those for like a week or something like that and they were actually literally just sparking and we're talking about events with coronal mass ejections where you can have um like you 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 know when you see a really strong rainstorm Mm -hmm. that with lightning because there's so much charged particles in the atmosphere is that like an emp blast kind of thing it's it's much worse it's because an emp blast is just a blast. It's okay, just it's one blast. Sure. It goes off. This is like a continuous uh, attack. Sustained electromagnetic distortion. Yeah, I mean, we're very something. small. We're just a mote of dust in space when it comes down to it, which is why I'm very big on us diversifying and getting off uh, Earth uh, because eventually we're going to die on this planet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we don't see these coming. They're too small. The bigger ones that we do see coming, we don't know how to stop because we aren't putting the money into it. NASA isn't getting any funding. I want us to mine asteroids because if we do that, then we're going to be able to stop asteroids from hitting us. And we're going to stop fighting over oil because we'll be f- busy maybe fighting in space where no one else is. And Getting all that platinum. Yeah, we need to get that platinum. That's really get what that platinum. Let's to. all invest in the platinum and get that money. Let's all do it. Let's <laughs> so, make it happen. But this is it's like this is a thing that humanity the dinosaurs would have never gone extinct had they had a space program. <laughs> right. And hey, you never want, forget, and, they took the bullet for us. They did. All right? So us little yes, mammals can evolve. Yeah. Never forget. But at the same time, we have a space program, and we wouldn't know what to do to stop it. Um, yeah. I remember I heard something from Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm not sure exactly how much he would know about this, but he seemed very confident that it would take us about 10 years to put something together to stop an asteroid that we may only have five years to stop. Right. So, and you can't just Armageddon it, because everyone thinks you can just nuke these things. You can't. That makes it worse. That just takes it from a huge a huge meteor to a hundred smaller radioactive meteors coming at us at once. Mm-hmm. So this is something we got to get a hold of. This is nature shooting a gun, and we got to be ready to deflect. Yeah. Uh, so a couple of things I wanted to point out. I, I did do some brief Googling in the in the quick... Internet searches I was able to do, the the closest term I could come up with is high-speed impact. Um, We mentioned the confusion between nuclear missiles and something like this coming. This is also one of the major reasons why we get concerned when a country like North Korea or so on, someone makes intercontinental ballistic missiles because they achieve this velocity, right, this high-impact velocity that literally there's no payload no explosive new, payload yeah. that they could load into it that would do any more damage other than yeah. a nuclear warhead because in an icbm when it comes back through the atmosphere you don't have to put anything in it that actually goes back to the v2 rockets that germany did they didn't need to fill them with explosives they would have made no difference because the impact velocity of going that fast it's just like you know a giant bullet going ridiculously fast it's mm-hmm. going to explode with the power to put a crater into the ground more than an air blast would from a bomb. More than any TNT or nitroglycerin. Yeah, the only anything. thing you can put in an ICBM is a nuke. There's nothing else that you, you don't need to. You could just have it empty, fill it with fuel. It doesn't matter. It'll do, it'll do the same amount of damage. All right, meteors are like nukes. Yeah. And yeah, they're it, like nukes, but worse and smaller, and we don't have track of them. It's yeah. like the Soviet um, arsenal's inventory. We have no idea what got out. Three, they, they thought 3% was like, yeah, 3% loss is fine. Yeah. But so. here's the problem. These things are real, and we don't have the resources or the ability to really check on them. And I think this is a, 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 just a warning sign for the human species to start investing into our space programs and actually start you know, going we, forward. Humanity needs to see forward. We need yeah. to see a horizon that isn't just on Earth. It's we've, we've lost ourselves, and now we're squabbling over things that we shouldn't be squabbling over when we could be progressing. Yeah, Earth is an island. But it can only be our home for so long until we have to eventually make that great move into the great beyond that's in outer space. 
And if we want to save our species, we need to start really having a conversation about creating a strong international space program yeah. mm-hmm. for us as a human species. This is where we should be putting our money in, not yeah. wars, yeah. not oil wars. We just green, green New Deal everything, get us off of Carl oil. Carl Sagan was right the whole time. Yeah. This is our island, this is our home, yeah. but we can't be here for too long. I mean, we, I mean, I, we live in the future, we have future technology, we, ha- we are the gods that we claim that we worship. We are the gods of this world. We are the planet's consciousness, and we spend our time arguing over very uh, useless things that we should have dealt with 20 years ago when we should be spreading throughout the galaxy. Absolutely. If you like what you just saw, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, make sure to hit that bell icon and give it a thumbs up. Help us build a better future and also really help build a strong independent media network here in the city of Chicago. Let's upset the neoliberal establishment.